this is Ingvar. Today, we're going to look at a fantastic game played between Vladimir Kremnik and Alexander Belyavsky in Belgrade in 1995. Kremnik had the white pieces and dominated with knight to f3. Belyavsky answered with d5. Kremnik decided to fiancé to his bishop with g3, c6, and bishop to d2. Kremnik castles and knight d7. D4 from Kramnik, E6, and now Knight B to D2. As I slowly change into my regular speaking voice. Now Kramnik wanted to avoid uh, the Queen's Gambit in this game, because he thought his opponent knew it quite well. And this was played in the last round. And curiously Kramnik had lost his uh, computer uh, with all his opening preparations, so he didn't really prepare nothing. So he just wanted to transfer the struggle into the middle game. Now after knight b to d2, we see f5, and this sets up the so-called stone wall formation, which is characterized by these pawns, which form a little bit of a wall here uh, in the center. Kramnik immediately attacked this wall with c4. We see bishop d6, normal development, trying to call the, control the e5 square, which is usually a weakness in the stone wall. Queen b3 by Kramnik, which attacks b7, rook b8 to protect the pawn, and now rook e1. Lining up against the king, but uh, at the moment we don't have an open e-file, so this is kind of a curious move. And we'll see the point of it later. Knight 8 6 was played by Pelevsky. Probably he wanted to avoid, and if we uh, set up the variation board, if knight g to f6. Maybe knight g5 is dangerous with an attack on, on e6. Protect, and now f3. And white is completely ready to rip open the position with e4. White stands quite well here. This was actually played in Jonathan Spielmann against uh, Garcia in 1995. Let's go back. So knight h6 by Pelevsky. Kremlin took on d5. And Pelevsky took with the C pawn. If he takes with the E pawn, let's have a look at that. Then perhaps the E file becomes a problem and we can play E4 immediately. And this would be very dangerous with the rook lined up against the king. Sample line is like F takes E4. What can take here? Knight takes E4. And if D takes E4, this rook takes e4 and black is in big trouble for instance moving the king allows bishop takes here and we're attacking the bishop which will drop and if you take on f3 queen takes f3 check so let's go back to the game Belyaski took with a z-pawn and now Kramnik played h3 here Belyaski probably should have taken on f3, but Kramnik was intending e takes f3. Once again, opening up for the rook with pressure on e6. We both have a threat on taking on e6 and the threat of queen takes d5 as well. And this will be problematic for, for black to deal with. So Belyaski went for uh, bishop to h5. And now a fantastic move by Kramnik completely blowing up the position. What do you think Kramnik played here? Kramnik played the fantastic move. Have you found it? E4, completely blowing up the position, opening up everything. We have an immediate attack on D5 or F5. The queen becomes active through E6. We activate the rook, everything, beautiful stuff. Excellent breakthrough, really tearing down that stone wall. F takes e4, and now another fantastic move, knight to g5. Belyaski played bishop f7. Let's have a look if he takes the knight, which was just put on offer. If he takes the knight, we have knight takes e4, with a double attack actually on the queen. We also have an attack on the bishop on d6, so queen e7 looks forced. But then we have bishop g5, and black can't really defend, 
example line is queen to f8, which is really beautiful. White can play queen takes d5. A beautiful temporary queen sacrifice because if black takes, he is. You are absolutely correct. He is mated in one move. Beautiful mate. Knight takes d6. So that's why Pelyaski didn't take on g5. Let's go back. Instead, he played bishop f7. But to no avail, really. We see knight d takes e4. Pawn takes e4. Otherwise, white is just completely winning. And now knight takes e6. So white has sacrificed the piece, but he has completely uh, blown up the stone wall. We see bishop takes e6, queen takes e6, and queen to e7. Curiously, this game was followed in 2009, uh, in a game between Martin Niebauer and Alexander Shabolov. Shabolov played bishop e7 and actually won with black, but this is a completely lost position. Belyovsky tried queen to e7. And now simply rook takes e4 from Kramnik. King d8 was played, but if you play queen takes e6, white will simply capture. The bishop is attacked, so the only way to, to save it is to interpose it here. But then white can take on h6, which gives him a tempo to do what? He has to bring the rook to e1, doubling the rooks. Uh, the bishop on e7 will fall, and white has about a gazillion extra pawns that should win him the game. Let's go back to the game. Pelyaski went with king to d8, and now queen d5. And this forced a resignation in only 18 moves. Pelyaski is himself a very strong player, and beating him in 18 moves with the white pieces is a fantastic achievement. The queen is attacked and, well, black can't survive anything here really. A move like uh, queen to f8, there's bishop g5 check. And white already has two pawns for the piece and he has a raging attack. Like knight f6, rook a to e1, all the pieces are active. And black is stuck with the king in the center. Rooks that are uh, not connected and just horrible scattered pieces doing nothing, pinned bishop, bad queen, while well, all white, uh, white's pieces are are working. So Belyazki didn't want to suffer there, and a fantastic game by Kramnik, uh, which made a big impression on me, on how to break through against the stone wall with the e4 break, and I hope you can apply this in your own games. Thanks for watching, bye bye.